What's up, guys? I'm Shane, and I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the offseason of the Relegation League. You'll notice we're in the coach changes screen because I decided, hey, we don't need to see the coach carousel. We're not going anywhere. We actually got offered a six-year contract extension. I was correct. We did not need to see coach carousel, but we did need to stay in the actual season to look at the season standings. Now, luckily... I didn't get screenshots this time, like the last time I screwed it up, but I did write it down. I know who's getting relegated. So good news, you guys get to stare at this screen for me to go over the relegations. Now, out of the ACC, Penn State, they won the Atlantic Division. They faced Virginia Tech in the conference championship. So those are two teams getting protected. West Virginia, they got promoted. They won the American Conference. And in second place over there was NC State. Going down to the American Conference is Pitt and Wake Forest, both of them finishing in last place. The protections had no factor whatsoever this year. Everyone who finished in last place was just legitimately in last. Over in the Big 12, Texas A&M finishing 18th in the country behind the guys who played in the, in the championship game. But they'll get the protection because they won that division. Oklahoma getting the protection over here. Moving on up, yeah, you'll see it, Texas State. Oh boy, I'm glad to have them back in my life. They're getting promoted over here. But the winner of Conference USA was Baylor. And moving down, Tulsa, who I... Didn't they win a bowl game? I already forgot. But uh, either way, they went 7-6 and six at least. They're getting relegated anyways. Dead last. That's how packed the Big 12 is. They get relegated. Rice went 0-12. There was no doubt about that one. Big 10 Conference, you had Ohio State. Despite the fact they lost to New Mexico State, they were still in the conference championship. And... They played Indiana. Not a team I ever thought get, would uh, get a protection. But those are the two staying. Moving up, you got Purdue and Northern Illinois. Finally making it to the Big Ten. Two teams moving down. Akron, again, they, they didn't even try. And Northwestern, they only had two wins. So it's not like they did much better. In the Pac-12, here's a shocker. You had Air Force going to the conference championship out of the mountain. They went over there to play Stanford. And in the usual rotation of uh, the regular cast of characters... Hawaii, back up to the uh, back 12 and Nevada came with them. Speaking of revolving doors in the SEC, Bama, nope, you didn't go there. Auburn won the Iron Bowl, so they went to the conference championship, and they played Miami. So those are two teams getting protected. And moving on up, Arkansas, Arkansas State, once again. And the two teams moving down, Southern Miss and Tulane. All right, so I redshirted Barron to try and keep him for one extra year, and he's declaring because he's a third-round projected pick. Not bad. Bell is a first-rounder, and so is Houston. That's what I mean. If I had just redshirted Houston, he was going to leave anyways. And Henderson, seventh-round pick. Good luck to you, bud. Uh, Beck, Culp, I mean, we're losing some pretty good players. You know, Ryan, Charles breaks my heart, but again, that's just the game. An 85 overall wide receiver is not going to get drafted. Holly, 88 overall. I mean, there is some real good talent that we're losing here. You know, we do have some replacements. Right now, we do have the number one overall recruiting class. Uh, and let's see. Persuasion. Oh, high. High that he stays. All right. Uh, let's see. Promise you'll not regret getting his degree. All right, cool. We don't have to lie to him. Hey, you're going to get your degree. That's all. I don't know if he can be up to a first round pick next year, but fingers crossed. All right, our D coordinator signed an extension. We signed an extension. And the offensive coordinator looks like he stayed, so cool. Damn, Buffalo fired this entire staff. Also, I love that Jim McElwain was somehow the head coach at Buffalo. And no changes to UMass's coaching staff. Actually, I didn't check last year. I'm kind of curious to see what UMass is doing this year. Like, who's getting drafted? Stevenson is declaring as a junior for the fifth, right? You need to talk these guys into staying. Hill is leaving. Allen's already getting drafted. The succession plan was Hill, but he wants to leave. If you talk these guys into staying, I mean, damn, like, so why would you get drafted in the seventh round? Just stay, bud. If you talk these guys into staying, maybe my guys get drafted instead. But you've got Allen, Smith, and Sledge all first rounders, and Holy Cross is a third rounder. 82 overall center, not good enough to get drafted, though. 93 punter, not good enough either. All right, let's see if... I don't I don't think anyone's going to want to transfer in here, but we'll take a look. No one wants to transfer here. That's all right, we're pretty loaded. Yep, they just let all of this talent walk out the door. Oh, well, I wouldn't have done that, but I'm not in control anymore. 
All right, this one's pretty cut and dry. We're just going after Adams. Some of these guys, you know, it would help the overall recruiting class, but it's not going to actually help the team. The only other person on here who could maybe help us is Williams because we do need another punter, but I'd have to offer him like 5,000 points to get him to stay, and I'm not taking all those points away from the wide receiver. All right, let's see how we do. Sweet, we got him. Uh, that's all we got, though. But that was good enough. Number one recruiting class for the University of Kansas. How the hell does that happen? Or is it Kansas? No, it's Kansas University. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, probably two Kansas fans out there. I'm sorry, bud. They didn't even go after him. They offered him like 2,000 points. Damn, I could have gotten someone else. Ah, well. Uh, I'm not going to complain about this class. Uh, us and Oklahoma are the top two. Notre Dame got six five-star prospects. But they just went all in for those guys, so they only got the number three class. Alrighty, guys. So here we are in position changes. I already took care of everything. So I was give you a quick recap of what I did. Anderson, a sophomore Juco. I just grabbed him. Put him at quarterback because it's the only place he was good. He'll catch a red shirt. So between him and Hayes, hopefully one of them sticks around for the long term. Mathis is probably getting cut because I don't see him getting drafted. I mean, unless I have him on the roster, but I don't want the preconceived notion of competition. Halfback, no one came over here, but I'm trying to figure out where this Michael King character came from. Did I sign him? I do not remember signing a 56 overall halfback, but cool. And out of these two, Bates is going to be the better overall, just because even like a plus three training results, he'll be the better halfback. A little bit faster, better acceleration, a little more elusiveness, so I think I'd rather have Bates starting over Porter, but a good one-two punch for us. I mean, wide receiver is stacked. I even had to take Nicholson. Again, another one of the athletes, he was only good at this and quarterback. So I threw him here. Uh, I don't even know. Most of these guys are probably going to catch tread shirts. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But Cruz, Hughes, and Stewart down here, all three of them might end up getting cut. Unless I can make some room on the roster for him. Yeah, I know. I thought Hughes was going to make a couple more big plays. But, hey, maybe that was just his senior day. Tight end, I was going to move Hayes over. He's like a 65 overall fullback. But I realized that the other three tight ends are all seniors. So actually, we're going to need another one. So I'd rather just have him here for depth. Offensive line, I left the center at center. He's a 76. If I move him over the guard, he drops like four points. Uh, he'll catch a red shirt. Gray will start for a season or two before he steps in. And then Stevens, who was center, I moved him over. He loses three points, but it's fine. He'll be starting the next year unless I find someone better. And in the freshman, left tackle, moved him over to right. Again, red shirt because Robinson will be better than him no matter what. At left end, it's all going to be true freshman starting here. We got Smith. Uh, he was just better off staying here. He actually drops a point if I put him at DN or D tackle. So better off staying at left end. Right end, Page, the other incoming freshman. Actually, I kind of forgot I had three good defensive ends coming in. So we're going to have Goss here, who caught a red shirt last year. He'll be starting. Robertson, I'm not 100% sure. I might just cut him for the sake of clearing up some room. But we got Cunningham and White, who White was our DN last year. Moved him over. He gained a point. Cunningham stayed the same. So real, real deep defensive line for us now. Linebackers, Newell was supposed to be right outside linebacker, but I prefer if I have a slower linebacker to put him over at left. Middle linebacker, we got Avery, the 99 Excel linebacker. I mean, he's going to be a beast with me using him, or he's going to make me look real silly. One of the two. Right outside linebacker, Thompson, the other linebacker we brought in, but he's going to catch a red shirt. Moody will get one last shot to start. Cornerback, we got the true freshman, the number one cornerback in the nation. He'll be starting for us. Probably, I don't know if he'll be out of the slot or something like that. Um, Fisher might just get put down as like the fourth cornerback because I hated him so much. And then Ray was another one of the athletes. Just the best place for him over here. He's, yeah, I'll redshirt him the first year and then we'll, he'll be good from there on out. Free safety, we're just leaving Guillory here. There's no reason to move him. Strong safety, we got Pierce and we got Franklin. Uh, Franklin's going to get training results, so he should be starting over Pierce. Who, again, you know how I love my redshirts. All right, now this is going to be big for us. What do the training results do? Oh, it's looking good already. So Matt Smith, in his sophomore year, already in the 90s overall, plus five to him. He's going to get the extra two points, get a plus seven. 
for obvious reasons, but I'm curious. Yeah, throw power only went to an 84. Accuracy's already 99. It's already maxed out. So we're going to bump up his throw power as much as possible. Uh, his awareness started at 48. He was at a 59 at the end of the season, all the way up to 65 now. Math is at an 86. Again, I don't think that'll be draftable, so he might get cut. Hayes up to an 83. Even Rooney down here up to a 76. I'll wait, like, if you can only find like a 65 overall quarterback, if that's all you can get, grab him. Because you've always got a shot with a quarterback. As long as you play well, he'll get... I mean, you saw Smith. What do you get? Five or six overall boosted points just by me playing. And I mean, he was incredible. But that's all it took was one really good season to get him that high. So if you have a 65 overall quarterback and have a good season, you can get him to a 70 by the end of his freshman year. Plus the training results. Yeah. Quarterback is not hard to figure out, but man, I appreciate finding Smith. Halfback Bates, yeah, up to 85 overall. Lucas down here, 74. So not bad for a third stringer. Fullback Boyd is up to a 71. That's respectable. I'm still going to try and find another fullback, but that's great. Wide receiver Mullins. Ah, oh, man, if it wasn't for how good Matt Smith was, I would totally give him the extra three points. But Smith, he deserves them. John Mullins to an 88. Williams, freshman coming off a red shirt, up to an 84. And then Cruz down here to 77, but he's a senior, so first one cut. Great plus six, though, by the way. Tight end Barron up to a 94. The other two seniors are in the mid-70s. Nothing incredible. Left tackle Howard up to a 79. Uh, you know, workable backup pieces here, but no one really standing out. We're, we're starting to feel on the O-line now. Williams a 79, plus six. That's great. Gray getting a plus six, too, all the way up to an 81. Rivera up to an 87 in his senior year. And Robinson up to a 76. Hodges getting a plus five. You'll be a great backup. <laughs> Goss getting a plus five up to an 85 overall. Robertson a plus six. White a plus five. So, I mean, it's going to be Goss and White starting for us. Uh, the other one catching a red shirt probably. And Robertson, yeah, he can stay on the roster. 84 overall is a good backup. Left that side linebacker Smith in his final year up to an 85 now. These guys down here are inconsequential. Same thing. Ooh, our 47 overall middle linebacker got a plus 5 because I needed a walk-on because I didn't have enough middles. And Moody getting a plus 6 up to an 83. Cornerback Parrish a plus 5. Fisher a plus 6. Spencer with a much-deserved plus 4. Yeah, he was terrible and his training results show it. Clark getting a plus 4. Guillory getting a plus 5 all the way up to an 87 in his sophomore year. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to talk him out of going to the draft next season. Franklin getting a plus four to a 77. So not that much better than the incoming freshman. But uh, good enough. He's faster. I mean, he's way faster. 87 speed, 89 Excel. The other guy's like 78 speed and like 82 Excel. So definitely want Franklin out there. Plus six to Harper. Please tell me you got a good bump to your kick power. Oh, yeah. Plus five. Perfect. And plus six to his kick accuracy. Puncher still sucks. All right. Only going to cut three players. So I think Cruz, you're definitely gone. Stewart, you're only 66, so you're gone. I don't see any conceivable reason for me to keep Mathis in here. I'd rather have to go to Rooney for a third stringer just because he's faster. So I definitely need someone with speed as a backup. So goodbye, Mathis. All right, now before we look at the schedule and everything like that, I did reset my skill tree. I took the points out a letter of intent because we're not going to need that till the end of the season. We are so close already to leveling up one more time, so I figure should be able to get that again. But this way, we'll have the full set of points the entire season, kitchen sink maxed out, and of course, the bonuses to the visits. All right, so we are going in at number 20 going into the next season. I thought we were going to fall way off, but these recruiting classes are carrying us. All right, red shirts are pretty obvious. We're going to redshirt Anderson, like I said. Smith will get his plus two in a couple minutes. Halfback, I'm actually going to redshirt Lucas here. Wide receiver, we're going to redshirt Thomas. And we give Montgomery a redshirt. I think I want to have Adams out here. I mean, 93 speed, 92 Excel is great, so I definitely want him out there. And we can afford to have someone a little bit slower down here in Nicholson. Tight end Conley is going to get the red shirt. Actually, both these guys are getting a red shirt. Center is getting a red shirt. And the right tackle, both the freshmen. Howe is getting a red shirt. I got him thinking he was going to be a D tackle, but right now he's still at left end. I still might move him later. And yeah, Cunningham, we'll, we'll need him later on so he can get a red shirt too. 
Although 81 speed is just hilarious at D-Tackle. Newell's getting a red shirt. Avery is not, but Thompson is. Let me give Ray a red shirt. Perry will start over Spencer. I think slot cornerback's good for him year one. Spencer, I'd like you off the field as much as possible. You were terrible. 79 speed, 84 excel. So yeah, a lot slower than Franklin, so Pierce can catch a red shirt. All right, schedule. I decided to be a little bit of a glutton for punishment. So we're going to open up against FCS because uh, I just want a tune-up game. Going to Tennessee, TCU, and Nebraska, all on the road to start up our conference schedule. Home game for a rivalry against Minnesota, or not Minnesota, Missouri, that M team. Um, and I'm just hoping we have some recruits ready for then. Then we're going to go at Georgia Tech. Now, they are a triple option team, and I'm going to hate myself for it. But I kind of want to see if we're good at it. Plus, we've actually got a good defensive line. So I might try out the uh, multiple playbook during this one. Going to be home for Oklahoma at Mid-Tennessee State, at Kansas State. So rivalry game that we won't be able to get a bonus for recruits on. Home for Oklahoma State, home for Iowa. And then finishing out the season, home for Texas State. I am not as concerned about recruiting this year. It's sort of like the last big push. And I'm going to look for some offensive linemen. I need a fullback. I need another tight end. I need a punter. Really, that's it. You know, and even then, if we're stuck with these offensive linemen, we'll make it through. But that's really all I wanted. Some O-linemen. Maybe some cornerbacks. Yeah, you know, punter, fullback, tight end. That's it. <laughs> Nothing crazy this year. We don't need any more wide receivers. We don't need any more running backs. And we definitely don't need any more quarterbacks. Defensive line is set, but if I find someone, I'll take it. Linebacker's in pretty good shape, too. But that'll wrap up this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit like down below. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get it delivered directly to your inbox every single time I upload. Any thoughts, suggestions, whatever you may have, leave all that down in the comment section below. Everything you leave down there, I will always respond to, unless you are the trolliest of trolls. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Shane. I'm out. I don't think he's going to be draftable, even, like, unless he gets a plus seven. Hi. I see you snuck out. Are you a sneaky peanut today?